This is me at five. This is me at eight. This is me at 12, appearing on Netflix with David Letterman and Formula One champion Lewis Hamilton. This is me going to college at 16 for engineering. And this is me last year when I was brought on as a test driver and prototype for an Italian race car coming to America. My name is Christian Ruddy, and I want to explore a couple things today. First, how innovation and motorsports impact us. Second, some cutting edge technology. And third, I want to look at their impacts considering our needs as a mobile society. But first, I'd like to tell you a story. It's a story about my grandmother. Here she is. From the age of five, she and my grandfather were huge supporters of my racing and academics. Sadly, my grandfather passed away five years ago, leaving behind many memories, including one in the form of a 2005 mini SUV. Now, she was reluctant to part with this car, but eventually she did make the decision to upgrade. In secret, my dad and I intentionally picked out a newer version, the same make, model, and color to ensure her peace of mind and honor my grandfather's legacy. However, our choice wasn't just about sentimentality, but safety too. We made sure to get her all the latest safety features, like collision avoidance, blind spot assistance, lane departure assistance, and even Apple CarPlay, and we patiently spent time teaching her how to use these systems without being overwhelmed. So picture this, about four weeks in, my grandmother calls my dad and I in a panic. She's on her way to a family gathering when suddenly alarms and chimes start blaring at her in the car and she's completely baffled. She tries restarting it, but to no avail. But later on, we discover the problem. It turns out she had placed containers of Jamaican food and baked goods on the back seat, making the car think that it was an unbuckled passenger. It's a funny reminder of how even the best technology can often have its quirks. It's fascinating to think that much of the technology on my grandma's car actually originated on the racetrack. There's an old saying in motorsports that what races on Sunday drives on Monday. And it's not just cliche, it's the real deal. Automakers heavily rely on the designs, technologies, and concepts tested on the track when bringing their cars to market. There's something to think about next time you're driving. So, what is it like being on that racetrack? I often describe myself as a driver who thinks like an engineer and an engineer who thinks like a driver. It's not just about the adrenaline or the speed. It's an art of calculated risk-taking, blending art and science. It's almost like being a fighter pilot. Every move requires the perfect blend of intellect and trained intuition, and all that has to happen fast enough to keep up with the speed of the race. Here, you can see me hitting a top speed of 113 miles an hour. And as an engineer, when I'm off the track, I need to understand how the car works and the science behind it. Throughout a race day, we're often adjusting and tuning to get the maximum performance out of the car. For drivers and engineers alike, giving good feedback, evaluating a problem, and thinking critically are all very important skills. This is all part of my passion for racing and automotive engineering, a passion that also extends to new technologies, so I'd like to explore one. This is autonomous racing. It involves collaboration between tech firms, race teams, and college engineering programs all pushing the boundaries of innovation. There's no human driving that car. It's all AI. This particular team, Co-19 R Racing, represented America in Abu Dhabi's A2RL competition back in April. These cars can go at speeds of 300 kilometers an hour, integrating LiDAR data with radar and, and cameras and what's called sensor fusion creating a complete picture of the world around it. This technology will help enable real-time decision-making 
and inform safety measures on self-driving cars on the road. Speaking of which, how many of you have seen the videos of drivers asleep behind the wheel of their self-driving cars? This is the kind of innovation that will help make that driver safer on their way to work. But with that, we have to ask ourselves, are we making safer cars for more distracted drivers? Living in a digital society, our cars are more capable than ever. Features like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay give my grandma the look and feel on her navigation screen that she knows from her smartphone. But she'll never use these while driving. She always pulls over first. So as a driver, do I need the capability to lead a Zoom call or to take my exam or even advance the slides of this PowerPoint from traffic? Are these just plain overkill? being marketed under the premise of safety? Perhaps as drivers, we're operating in a bubble, isolated from the outside world. But what happens outside of that technological bubble? Beyond just cars and motorcycles, scooters and skateboards have long shared our roads, with bikes actually predating cars. Recent innovations in electrified models offer affordable and sustainable ways to get around over impressive ranges. These personal electric vehicles, or PEVs, have transformed the way we move through what's called micromobility. I myself enjoy using an e-scooter to quickly get around. But there's more to it. Pedestrians, bikers, and PEV users are the most vulnerable people on the road, especially against cars. Even with a helmet, the lack of protection being inside a car provides. So with more people opting for different modes of transportation, we need to address potential dangers head on. Let's look at some numbers. According to the Governor's Highway Safety Association, pedestrian deaths shot up by a whopping 77% from 2010 to 2021. Just in 2022 alone, we're talking about 7,508 pedestrians losing their lives, about 21 every day. So why are we seeing more pedestrian fatalities despite all the tech on our cars? I'll give you a hint. It's not just driver error. Three quarters of drivers report seeing pedestrians glued to their phones. Distraction is a real issue for both pedestrians and drivers. And for another reason, Let's take a look at today's car designs. Those imposing rides with their high, blunt front ends, they might look cool, but they're not doing pedestrians any favors. In older cars, in an impact, they might hit you in the legs or in your torso, but now it's often straight to the head. And with a higher front, that means visibility over it takes a hit too. So what can we do about this? Automakers have been making strides. For one, there's impact absorbent bodywork. This helps reduce injury to pedestrians by helping absorb some of the impact if they are hit. And have you ever heard of a hood lifting system? Picture this. Your car is detects that it's about to hit a pedestrian. So right before the moment of impact, boom, the hood pops up, creating space between it and the hard stuff underneath. It's like an airbag for those outside of the car. And that brings me to my last point. PEVs are changed in the game, but our public spaces weren't designed with this micromobility revolution in mind. Yes, our cars could use a makeover, but our public spaces, they can use some love too. We could even take some cues from racetracks. Think rumble strips or speed bumps or even S-curves, we call them chicanes, help slow things down and keep everyone safe. This is a picture of Hoboken, New Jersey, a city that has not suffered a single traffic fatality since January of 2017. It can be done. It's clear that we all have the role to play in making sure we get from point A to point B safely. Automakers, listen up. Safety should be a top priority don't just compromise for what's in vogue. Drivers, don't get too comfy with all those fancy automated systems. Stay alert and watch out for your fellow road users. And if you're on foot, please...
put your phone down when you're crossing the street. Let's keep our heads up and stay present in the moment. And to all the city planners out there, let's make our streets a bit friendlier for everyone with protected bike lanes, safer crossings, and maybe even a couple futures from racetracks. As we journey into the future, let's keep pushing for safer rides, smarter streets, and never lose sight of the big picture. While these innovations may propel us into the future, let's also hold on to common sense, just like my dear grandmother would. Thank you for joining me on these few laps around the track. My name is Christian, and I leave you with my tagline, safety first, and see you at the finish line. Thank you.